Here at Bovington and Dorset, 154 of the British Army's mega machines are stationed under the command of the 9th 12th Royal Lancers, Prince of Wales's. The main battle tank of this training ground of excellence is the Challenger 1. Powered by its vast rear-mounted Rolls-Royce CV12 turbocharged diesel engine, this thirsty beast can move at a healthy 56 kilometers an hour. Armed with a 120 mm main gun and two 7.62 mm machine guns at 62 tons, it's as heavy as a brontosaurus. The crew consists of the driver, gunner, loader and tank commander. And in battle, these hatches are closed down. And the only way of seeing out is by periscope. The 18-ton main gun is accurate at over 10,000 meters, and each tank carries 52 rounds. Automatic stabilizing makes the main gun stay on target, regardless of the tank's movement. And the turret, powered by a second engine, can turn a full 360 degrees. Armed vehicles have come a long way since the days of chariots and battering rams. The improvement over hundreds of years of mobility, protection and firepower are all rolled into this battle-proven Challenger 1. From one of the largest armoured vehicles to one of the smallest, the Ferret Scout Car, known as the Field Mouse. The Ferret carries a two-man crew, a commander and his driver. Lightly armoured, this Alvis-built reconnaissance vehicle is mounted with smoke canisters and a general-purpose machine gun, the Jimpy. With the front and top open, it can be very chilly to drive. With a top speed of 72 kilometers per hour, allowing it to dart about the front line, its successful design has kept the ferret in service for 40 years. It may look vulnerable on an open road, but the field mouse would be a very hard moving target to hit.
Another reconnaissance vehicle is this dual-purpose Spartan. Used for long-range recces, it also acts as an armoured personnel carrier. Usually with a crew of three, the commander, driver and gunner, a Spartan can give a lift to four heavily armed passengers. They call it the battle taxi. It's protected by light aluminium armor and in action would have a mounted machine gun. Jaguar engineering in the Mark 100 4.2 litre engine enables this tracked transporter to go at up to 80 kilometres an hour, making it one of the fastest vehicles on the battlefield. Spartans may get the soldiers quickly into action with a certain amount of protection, but for those in the back, it's a pretty rough ride. Next up is the Warrior. This armoured personnel carrier can take seven soldiers in the back. Its powerful Rolls-Royce Perkins V8 engine gives it a top speed of 65 kilometres an hour. The Warrior's firepower is a 30 mm Rodin cannon and a chain machine gun. In a battle, it would follow the tanks into action, drop off the fighting men, and provide covering fire. The ride is bad enough for the commander, and it's even worse being shaken about in the back but you have to spare a thought for the driver. The Chieftain is the old workhorse of the Royal Armoured Corps. First introduced over 30 years ago, over 2,000 have been made, and many have been sold to other countries. In their time, Chieftains have seen their fair share of action, and in Britain today, they're ideal for training.
Although tanks are big, they are quite easy to drive. The gears are semi-automatic, and the accelerator is a pedal, just like in a car. Instead of a steering wheel, the driver has levers on both sides of him. When he wants to turn, he pulls up either one. And from his sprung seat underneath the turret, he receives his orders from his commander by radio. The tracks on tanks were developed from tractor designs used on farms 100 years ago. A track is a belt of flat metal links. A rear sprocket wheel drives this track to the front of the vehicle. The six main wheels roll freely over it, and the belt is then picked up at the back. It's as if it was laying and picking up its own metal carpet. If it gets a bit loose, they can easily remove one of the 88 links. It's a bit like tightening your bike chain. During its life, the tank's working parts take a constant pounding and shaking when driven to the limit. Even the faithful chieftain can sometimes break down. One of the gears seems to have gone. They're right out on the far side of the ranges at the end of a tough session. And the last thing they want is to become stranded. They decide to try and limp back. Well, they tried, but now they've got 54 tons of tank marooned in the mud. Now they've got to get help. If they're going to get back to the camp before nightfall, the sooner it comes, the better. The Royal Engineers' main recovery vehicle is the CRAV. CRAV stands for Challenger Armoured Recovery and Repair Vehicle. Based on the body of a Challenger tank, this battle breakdown unit carries all the tools of the trade for a successful rescue mission. Chieftain Commander reports the problem to the rescue team, and it's clear the only thing to do is to pull them out. Heavy-duty chains and steel hawsers are what they need now. Two 
Having bolted all the chains and cables to the stricken chieftain, the crav backs up to play out its line. When in position, it will wedge in its digger and winch up the slack in a real tug of war. It's late, wet, and getting dark before the Krav can pack up and head for home, leaving the old chieftain to make its own way back to camp. The army is always prepared for action, and the Royal Armoured Corps is on the move at Bovington nearly every day of the year. 
Today, there is a long planned exercise involving men and machines from the 9th 12th Royal Lancers, the Royal Artillery, and the Royal Engineers. All the big guns are out in force for a maneuver which will involve battle tanks, armored personnel carriers, and the bridge layer. With floods reported on the range, the going will be tough. Conditions turn out to be worse than expected. More than ever, teamwork will play a vital part to ensure the exercise is a success. Spartan crew on reconnaissance discover that the floods have filled the gully and after reporting the situation, they withdraw to a vantage point and await further orders. The massive AVLB is an armoured vehicle laying bridge. Based on a chieftain, this monster can lay its 12 metres span metal bridge in just three minutes. Machines like this play a vital backup role in any advance. This is the AS-90, a major Royal Artillery weapon. It's the most advanced gun of its type in the world, weighing some 45 tonnes. The 155mm howitzer has a range of 27 kilometres and can pound enemy positions over the top of advancing troops. Even at that distance, it's accurate to 50 centimetres. The firepower of the AS-90 is awesome. It carries 45 rounds, each of which is capable of leveling an area the size of a football pitch. With hydrogas suspension, the ride is surprisingly smooth, even at full speed. The weather has improved, but conditions are still tough. The Armoured Corps manoeuvre into position, ready for a full-scale bridge crossing. The 
AS-90 tucks itself into temporary cover and the crew batten down the hatches. The satellite-guided barrel then pinpoints its target. Challenger 1 seeks its own temporary cover while waiting to be dug into a better place to guard the bridge builder. Challenger needs digging in in order to make it a smaller target on open ground. The Royal Engineer CET Combat Engineering Tractor is the bulldozer for the job. It's a very adaptable tractor and can be used as a pathfinder, ramp builder, and with small changes it can float. It has two driver seats, one pointing in each direction, making this a truly push-me-pull-you vehicle. When the hole is deep enough, the challenger can take up position for its part in the exercise. Now it's up to the bridge layer to pave the way for the others.
The bridge itself weighs eight tons, but because it's so tall, in high winds it could blow over. In normal conditions, it's very safe because it's balanced at the back by a 50-ton tank. Before the fighting vehicles are allowed to cross, the bridge layer will test its own work. This bridge can support 70 tons, though vehicles only go over it one at a time.
it's been a successful crossing and all the vehicles are over. Now the AVLB just has to pick up its bridge. exercise has gone as planned and the Royal Armoured Corps can return to base. The mammoth might of the British Army fighting machines and their heavily armoured backup vehicles are a power to be reckoned with. From the bulldozers and bridges, to the ferrets and warriors, from the Spartans to the AS-90s, these awesome army vehicles are all mega machines. And none more so than Challenger 1. <laughs> 